now. <clears throat> I will know soon enough because people will go, what's up, dude? No. You rock. We. I'm getting a notice that I just went live. <sighs> What's up, Mickey? What's up, Terry Himes? Double R guitar. Used to be. Mickey Settlemeyer. Frank C. Lisa Rich. Used to be HB Jr. Rick Lavin. This one's this one is for Andy. What's up, Mr. B? <laughs> no, you rock wreck. What's up, Larry? Josh? Josh made a live one. Rock and roll. What's up, dude? Oh, no. What's up, Dan of Jay? Good morning, Gary. <laughs> no, no, you are the dude. Uh, did you ever get tired of quick, uh, tired of guitar and quick guitar for a while? No, but when I first got into graduate school, it was a little scary. <laughs> and I, I didn't play guitar for a while. And, uh, like, like probably, uh, like, um, well, see, I don't know though, because I think at first I was still working in the music store. I, I would say it was like right after, I would say only like once a week I could like maybe play guitar, but for the most part, I wasn't playing guitar. No, I guess it was second year. Um, yeah, because I had moved out. Yeah, I went like a good year. What's up, Alex? What's up, Eric? Coots 13? Oh my god! Joe Gattuso! <laughs> that, that's all I got. Hey, Joe, 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 Joey, uh, do you remember back in the 80s, I think you owned one, it was an Ibanez Allen Holdsworth, Ibanez Allen Holdsworth had a single pickup. I forget if it was a hardtail or if it had a tram and it had like a little spider graphic up on the headstock. And I think they had it in like two colors. I want to say it was like almost like a maroon red and sort of like a like a green, like a hunter green, right? Something like that. Do you remember that guitar? Uh do you, 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 let me know. Let me, I think you had, I had one. Do you remember that guitar? Uh, from South Chelmsford. Uh, just looking at a red one of these on Reverb 30 minutes ago. Oh, oh and Alan holds red. So Susie says, I have one. Josh, yeah. Susie says, yeah. Joe says, yes, I do. They were getting rid of them cheap, and you had a red one. Right. I'm pretty sure I got a green one. All right. Now, this is all a big segue into my favorite Alan Holdsworth story. Six months before Alan Holdsworth tragically passed away, he was at the NAMM show. Not even six months, four months, five months before the, he passed away. He was at the NAMM show at the Kiesel booth. And uh, 
I like almost shit myself, right? I'm like, oh my God, that's Alan Holt. There was nobody at the table. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I went out, said hello. He signed a little thing for me. And we took a pic together. And I was like, yeah, I go, dude, I had your signature guitar like back in the, uh, back in the 80s. I had the green one. And he just deadpans, the green one did sound good. <laughs> The green one did sound good. That's my and that's and that concludes my Ellen Holdsworth story. <laughs> oh, the Ibanez ref. <laughs> Let me tell you what's gonna happen here, okay? Gibson out of business. Fender, not out of business. Gotta keep Fender, they're not gonna go under, okay? But at the end of the day, it's going to be Ibanez and Fender. And that's it. <laughs> he passed away, as you might imagine. He drank a lot of he drank a lot of coffee and he smoked a lot of cigarettes. And uh that dude, he, man, he was a hot shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, selling your guitar on Craigslist advice. Um, I just, you know, it, 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 you're going to deal with a lot of uh, meatheads, right? You're going to say, like, I'm, I'm asking, like, you know, uh, 350 and they're going to go, will you take 100 <laughs> right? Get ready for that. Um, and you're going to get some dudes who are going to be like, yeah, yeah, I'm all hot on it, I'm all hot on it. And then they, like, don't show up. That's a pain in the ass, too. Uh, but for the most part, if you price it right, if you price it aggressively, I, I've had good success on, on Craigslist. I, I really have. Uh, uh, Joe says, uh, I, had, I saw Alan at a place called The Club in Cambridge. Yeah, yeah, with Jeff Berlin. I had about eight beers during this set. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> a funny dude yeah i'm pretty sure he was goofing on me but i'll take it all right we don't have a we don't have a flame cam we do have the body cam bod cam remember these joe remember these we sold a few of these suckers back in the day what you need kid is you need one of those new ibanez but check out that flame it's got a little bit of a flame neck you know they weren't afraid to to use some flames I don't know how much is coming out though. So, so hard. God. The amount of work we have to do to sit here and do stuff. <laughs> Is the guitar still for sale? What guitar? I haven't. Uh, I haven't had a guitar for sale. I think since last year. What year is this Ibanez? I am guessing it is a ninety or a ninety-one. You know, the guy. It's a long story. I think the guy had the yellow and he wanted to make it black. He didn't like the yellow, and so he made it black. But then the decal showed up and it was <laughs> freaking black. <laughs> They said the wrong decal. So he, he sprayed it yellow, but he sprayed it like the yellow they had at the store at friggin', um, you know, Home Depot, and they clearly don't match, right? It, it, it's really supposed to be a day glow. It's supposed to have a lot more green in it, but whatevs. It's it's a killer neck, and it was short money. I think I traded a Squire for it, you know? Uh, it needed a little bit of work, but it's all fixed up now. I think uh, the electronics are a little screwy when I first got it. I fixed those up. Yeah, 
we sold a lot of these. So, Joe, the, remember the the god-awful one, the Road Flare Red one? We used to just look at it and go, who the hell is buying that guitar, right? Those are worth money. That's actually a freaking valuable color now. <laughs> go figure. And you remember that stupid gem I had, the green one? Those are collectible. Things worth like 10 Gs now. It's a, it's a ridiculous. <laughs> What's up, Don? <laughs> yeah, the necks are super thin right here. <clears throat> These necks are thin in general. Careful, you'll cut yourself. They are, uh, they are, th they are thin. <laughs> Uh, do you have a gem 777 universe seven string no i never had the man i don't i think it was the that was the uh it wasn't a gem seven i had a gem seven seven but that wasn't a seven string that was a six string you're thinking of the u the U V seven right i think it's u u something it's not um it's not gem uh the gem the seven 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 was green Loch Ness green it was signed by steve i, I had number 117 <laughs> little approach note there it happens i uh, just sold my 1991 fender ultra ebony burst for 2100 dad and happy and saying yeah 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 we sold a few of those we had the we had the strat ultras when we were when we were upstairs in the upstairs building that was like 1991 ish 1991 <laughs> dive bomb like a mother <laughs> <laughs> He's having an episode. Hey, what's up, Jamal? I would I would call Jamal a super fan. He's one of the few people that found my Patreon. He's one of my two Patreons. <laughs> Vin tells me, um, you're doing a lot of the lessons. You're doing the Skype lessons. It's a good time to be in the Skype lesson business right now. <laughs> I would say. <laughs> <laughs> you need to pull out the red EVH. You know, I almost did that. That was the one I was going to reach for. And I just felt like I had played it more recently than this. And, you know, I, I like to mix it up, you know. Been on a bit of a Vola kick. I think I'd give people a break from the Volas. But, uh, you know, I figured I'd go Ibby. I went, uh, I went old school Ib. But, yeah, no, the EVH, I, I, that's so funny. I looked at the EVH. No, I got the Volas, they're right there, but, you know. <laughs> you can't have pizza every day, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
What's up, Manfred? Manfred. You know what, Jill? It could be worse. <laughs> So, you know what? I got a bunch of new patches. You want to just check out some new patches and we'll just see what you think. Um, that's one of me standards. <laughs> but there's a whole bunch of new... I, I got a whole bunch of ones in here. What do we got? You know what? I, I better... Uh, how, how can I do this? Can I move that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, no. I got to go like that. Oh, right. See. it... Oh, come on, brah. Okay, who's coding this? Who's coding this shite? <laughs> ah, who is be coding this shite? All right. Uh, let's see. So, like, one thing. Well, it's out, huh? What's up, Todd? What's up, Steven? What's up, Nick? All right, let's see. This is called Roots Rock. Compressed funk. Thanks, Chad Boston. Hello, Austin from North Carolina. Hope you and your family are well. Have a beer and a set of strings on me. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, man. You know, and demon and demonetized. <laughs> At it. That's kind of fun. <laughs> I think we found a winner. <laughs> Sometimes those songs sound like the record skipping. Thank you. 
Trucci prog rhythm. Yeah, it's kind of mono. Solo. Killing me from pushing around lawnmowers today. That's not bad. Uh, I got uh, this is just Starbucks. Unfortunately, um, I, it looks to be that uh, the Kirkland stuff's all gone. Oh. <laughs> Oi. A little fizzy. Up at very mid pushed. Geez, talk about mid pushed now. They call this VA trip. Oh, thanks, Metalhead Hippie. Be my 350th subscriber. Yeah, I'll subscribe. Everyone else, subscribe, too. Let's get them over 350. I kind of like that one. God, Van Halen. He was good. He is good. You know, although I don't know if he's going to be touring anytime soon. <laughs> I kind of like that. I could live with that. That's called V V V V Halen riff. Oh, it's got a wah. (laughs) 
And what else are you going to do if you don't have a foot wire? Oh, like a like a slap back? Yeah. Not bad. Can we do Summer Nam in Boston? Bro, I told you, come up here. I will give you the grand tour. It includes, and I am not kidding, a stop at Dairy Queen. So, I'm just throwing that out there. Progressive solo. <laughs> Who was more who was more prog than Keith Richards? For Christ's sakes. <laughs> oh, Davy. He's my lovey Davy. <laughs> He's having an episode. I wanted a whammy bar tonight. I was feeling a little silly. A little bit. A little silly. Um, dude, thanks for hanging out, Joe. <clears throat> Family's all doing great. Everything's going well. Hope everything uh, is going uh, great with you. And when this is all over, at some point, we'll have to get together and get you over here for a live show. We'll get you down here in the basement and, uh, and, ho and hooked up, hooked into the system. <laughs> Uh, hello, Sean. <laughs> Quincy Harbor. My, uh, excuse me, my, my wife. This is my standard song. That's the blues version. Um, my my wife was gonna get down to Quincy Harbor because she. Uh, we have a hermit crab, and the hermit crab, believe it or not, um, needs salt water from the ocean every once in a while. It's got to be like salt ocean water because it has the, the right bacteria. And uh, so anyway, um, she's got to go there like every three or four months. So. Uh, She's got to go there soon. Absolutely, Joe. Absolutely, bro. What else are you doing? <laughs> uh, it's like, I'm down a rake in the yard. <laughs> hey, super happy, awesome, super fun, awesome, happy time pedal show. You know, you pick the you pick the funnest names. <laughs> So, um, Gabor, let me ask you, did you know about, um, is it, was it Super Fun Ball or is it Super Happy Fun Ball? What was, what was the SNL skit where they're like, you know, it's so much fun. Then they were like, do not taunt Super Happy Fun Ball. <laughs> Super Happy Fun Ball. <laughs> like... Hey, like it, it started to leave all these disclaimers, you know, as a part of a meteor. Yo, Steve, do you play in any open tunings? Uh, you know, I used to a little bit more. It's hard to uh, with the Floyd, you know. Got a family in Marshfield. Marshfield. We were just at the fair. <laughs> Super happy, yeah. I thought it was super happy fun ball. Happy fun ball? I think it was super happy fun ball. <laughs> super happy fun ball. <laughs> Should not be left alone. Super happy fun ball. You know, 
Do not taunt Super Happy Fun Ball. I remember that line, do not taunt Super Happy Fun Ball. <laughs> Uh, how the new cats doing? The new cats are doing great. Um, the one that was all skittish is definitely coming more. I mean, we can't really touch her, and we don't want to. You know, we'll let her, you know, go on her own pace. But she's coming out closer and closer and loves to play. You know, she'll come out and play, and uh, they'll run around up there, the, the two cats. And Buddy is, like, the world's most amazing cat. He is your truly your buddy cat. He just, like... I swear to God, he's like a, you know, he's like an emotional support cat for the whole family. He just, he just makes his rounds. Let me let me sit next to you and purr and hang out. Okay, all right, great seeing you. I'm going to go on to someone else. <laughs> you know, he really is. Yeah, he's an amazing cat. So uh, it's been great. It's been great. We've been, um, we've been really excited to have them in the house. And they've been doing great. And, uh, yeah, no, it's been a... You know, a little ray of sunshine in an otherwise dreary day. What's up, Adam D? Uh, right now, I am using THU. Although you could get this sound with TH3. You couldn't get it with TH2. It's a dual amp. It's a double amp. It's one of them double amps. You know those you know those amps that are like double amps? That's what it is. Well we want to name the introvert I think we want to name the the introverted cat patches because um, you know, it's a calico and it's all covered in these amazing, you know, calico patches. It really is like a, like a quilt. The cat's amazing, gorgeous cat, all white on the bottom, but the back is all patchwork of these different, that's a true calico. It really is. It's a female, 99.9% .9 of calicos are female. Apparently it's a female thing, but, um, no, she's, she's getting better, but she's like, like this, you know, the other cat's more like, Hey, hey what's up, bro? She's all like, uh, I mean, I'll play, but that's about it. <laughs> okay, so she's, she's a little bit, she's a little bit, um, uh, skittish right now, but you know what? She went from like not even coming out to like pretty much staying under the dining room table coming out and like laying in the living room floor. I mean, we've only had her a week, right? A little, uh, we had eight days, nine days. So, you know, give it nine months and see where she's at. <clears throat> she's only two, you know. Hey, speak, are you going to name the cat Sofa? Oh, my God. You guys know about that? We, get, we got a sofa. Uh, we had scheduled a sofa to be delivered today, okay? You see where this is going? Wouldn't fit through the door to the attic. I couldn't get it up. This couldn't do it. It wouldn't fit through the door. I even took the door off, and they were like, "Nope, there's no way this is going up there." And uh, we had to send it back. We're gonna have to remeasure. He's like, "It'll fit in your space once it gets up through the store." Because we can't get it up there. You're gonna have to find something. You have to measure this, and you're gonna have to go with something that has a large leg that can that show. He goes, "They come without the legs on it." He goes, and I, he goes, I'll, that will go up like a big TV set. He goes, that'll go up no problem, he said, but a big, thick sofa like this isn't going up there. And I'm like, the sofa that was up there was like seven feet long. And he's like, no, it's not that. It's the, it's the we can't, yeah, because they were able to get it up and get it up over that bookcase because uh, the top of the stairs is wrapped in a bookcase. Then he goes, they were able to get it up and over because it's skinny enough it can go right up the staircase. And then they just have to make the turn. Because we can't even get up the staircase. It's just, it's too narrow. And I'm like, son of a bitch! <laughs> so we brought it down. We had to talk to them. Uh, you know, that's 250 bucks down the toilet. Because, you know, they'll refund the sofa. But they're not going to refund the delivery. they just not. So... 
Anyway, back to looking online. And, of course, in the meantime, to get the old sulfur out, having watched the movers in 2002 get that sulfur up there and knowing what they went through, I brought a Sawzall up and I just chopped it up into bite-sized pieces. And, you know, the, the wife and kids brought them down. I chopped them up so small, you know, they just brought it down in pieces and it's in the backyard under a tarp until the dump will open for, you know, bulk items again. Unless I want to drop, I think it's like $26 to have them pick it up at the house. And I'm too cheap. No, I'll, I'll wait. The dump is literally right up the street. I'll just go to the dump. So, we'll, uh, we'll see. Right now, there's no sofa in the attic. <laughs> oh, I'll have to figure something out. <laughs> This is an RG 550. Maybe we'll stick on that sound for now. Kind of goes with this guitar. I do like the flambe neck too. It's a good one. Now, I wonder if I could get that. I wonder if the neck would show up. Can you see the can you see the flame down here anymore? Any better? Not really. It's still kind of blown out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, not really. Not really. <laughs> <coughs> Overall thoughts on the RG570. Well, the early ones before the all-access neck joint, they changed the neck profile though. In an OG RG560, which is I want to say like um, 88 through or 89 through like 92 or 93, somewhere in that area. Um, yeah, those are great. Uh, but then when they got the all access neck joint, um, it's still a great MIJ guitar, but the neck pro profile is not the same, and it'll have that enormous skunk stripe in the back, right? This one has a fretboard on it, so there is no skunk stripe, right? So it's a whole different approach to making the neck. Uh, on the on the later models and it doesn't have the plate right they went to the four screws uh the four screws of the apocalypse of course and, uh... and uh th those are the good years the 550 the 560 and the 570 between like 87 now remember if it, even if it says an 87 serial number they really weren't in stores until like January of 88. You know, it was all talk until 88. They were all producing them in 87, but it'll have an 87 serial number. Ibanez is always off by one year, right? 80 items marked with an 87 serial number will be in stores starting in January of 88, February of 88. <laughs> And they, the other thing is, whoever owned this, they scalloped. You can see, right, he got a little scallop there. I think he scalloped, is it 12th up, 15th up, 14th up? Who even knows? 14th up? And they're very shallow scallops. Like, why? Look at me, I'm Steve Vai. I mean, what was, what was he thinking? <laughs> Look at me, I got a gem. Like, no. <laughs> mm. <laughs> 
How does it compare to the Volis? Well, they're both MIJ, uh, but this has a much, much thinner neck, and it's lighter than the Volis. Um, <clears throat> the Vola with the ash top and the black, that's a mahogany body. That guitar has got a little bit of weight to it. And then the other one, I want to say, is a neck through maple. That's got a little weight. And I want to say it's mahogany wings. So, again, and a maple top. So they're both heavier than this guitar. This is a basswood body with a, a neck so thin that's like, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a thin neck. It really, really is. What's up, Tony? Then the other Tony. Uh, man on the Silver Mountain. Like... <laughs> uh, Volas are MIJ. Yeah, um, about 70 or 80% of Volas are MIJ, and like 20 to 30% are MI made in America, made in um, California. <laughs> But the last, <clears throat> the last two Volos I had on here, the one with the black top, which is right, sitting right there in the guitar stand, and that blue, like um, the blue, um, like uh, quilt top, uh, those are both MIJ. <laughs> What's up, David? <laughs> Oh, thanks, Electro Omega. I was looking forward to this tonight. I, I actually spent a long time out in the yard today. Uh, first nice day. We have just been rain, 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 rain. Damn. Rain. <laughs> and then rain. What's this? Get, what's this? Get, what, what's it looking like for tomorrow? Rain. And we had a nice sunny day today. Actually, I think we're going to be in for a little bit of a dry patch. But um, yeah, no rain. Lots of rain. Uh. I feel like the slow E is just. Look, I'll pay you for it. What? Yeah, THU full. Uh, you still have the IOMI SG? Yeah, I do. I do. I got. Uh, I have all of them except for the the amber. Um, the amber LP standard. I I gave that to Bobby, and he already like modified the shit out of it. And then uh, the other one is the um, that like 
the Supreme. Remember the Supreme? They literally spelled Supreme wrong. Um, <clears throat> I gave that to my brother-in-law. He's like, oh, I need a guitar. I was like, I have just the one. <laughs> he, he couldn't believe it. He's like, oh, my God, dude. He was like, I said, dude, calm down. <laughs> and then he was like, oh, sure. <laughs> What this one here? He says the white Paul. You want to check out the uh, the custom? Yeah, that sounds a little loud. I don't have the Iomi available right now. It's not it's not very close. Uh, I got the EVH close. I got the Volos close. I got the Strat Select close. I got the Dan Electro close. I got, and of course, this close. This is a little harder to get to because it's in the back there. <laughs> I got the Wolfgang. You know, I, I think I think the pickups in the Wolfgang are just sort of okay. Like, I like these pickups better. I think they're a little bright. <laughs> This guitar is so easy to play. You forget how easy friggin' Ibanez guitars are to play. <clears throat> They're making every other guitar look bad right now. I mean, even my even my super expensive J Custom doesn't play as easily as this. It's because the neck is so damn thin. Uh, the, I don't think I'm using an IR. This is just the Marshall cab. This is just their Marshall cab. Of course, they can't use the word Marshall. This is the M Vintage 412. It's M Vintage. The M Vintage is written in a, a script that looks a, a, an awful lot like Marshall. I don't know. People are talking. <laughs> like it's in D and he's in drop D and I'm not there but I'm in the wrong I don't have a drop yes mm, vintage I do use this patch a lot for obvious reasons because it's like freaking awesome. Oh. So, how's the weather where you are? Today it was gorgeous here, but it's been pretty crappy. We've been in a, we've been way below normal, like 10 to 15 degrees below normal. Two weeks ago we had snow. 
And now it was like friggin' gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. It was gorgeous out today. <laughs> Seventy-one in Ohio. That's where, that's where we were today. We were like in the low seventies, you know, high sixties. You know, these are really good. Someone said, "I've been this is the best bang for the buck." These are really good bang for the buck. I mean, they're starting to catch on as like a vintage instrument, but you know, for a while you could get these for like you know three to four hundred bucks. That is a steal. When they were new, they were when they were new in nineteen eighty nine. They were like seven or eight hundred bucks. Right? <laughs> it's like, Jesus, it's like, you're, they're cheap. You know, I mean, time value of money. <laughs> nice in Ohio, 67 and beautiful, lovely in the UK for this time of year. Yeah, Krellbarn knows. He's not too far from me. He's like 50 miles away. Chicago was 78. rest of the past week was 40s and 50s. Yeah, we're in that same bubble. We've been stuck in the northeast in this big-ass trough. So it's been super freaking cold. Uh, raining heading towards... Yeah, we had a lot of rain. We've had rain, rain, rain. 99 in Arizona. <laughs> If your knife edges are going, making you lose tune. Could be. Let's see. I think the string is a little slinky when I hit it, it's going out of tune. I think it's my hand. Yeah, maybe if I pull up. back in so you like you go one way and you see if it sticks up and you go the other way and you see if it sticks down right maybe throw a little bit of uh lube in there <laughs> 76 tomorrow in massachusetts yeah 80 in indiana yeah it's been nice it's been a beauty yeah in Columbus. Would say Ibanez make your favorite make of guitars? I don't know. I, you know, I, I kind of like Fender and Gibson. You know, I they, they're all so different. It's almost like saying, do you like steak as your favorite food? It's like, not necessarily. Don't get me wrong. A really good steak is a really good steak, but, you know, there's some pretty amazing fish and chicken and pasta dishes, too. So, you know, it's just like one of those things there, you know, I don't, I don't know, there's, there's a, I think there's, um, I see a, a lot of crowd out there that they really want like a solution, like there's still like it's a math problem and there's an answer, but there really isn't. Uh, you know, people will tend to gravitate towards one brand, but I like to, I like to, I like to move around. I think variety is the spice. A lot of people don't, a lot of people like, they either, all in on one guitar or one brand or one style. I have a Les Paul in nine different varieties or a Strat in nine different varieties, but I just like nine different varieties, you know?
Yeah, the tuning channel. <laughs> all tuning all the time. <laughs> So Montrose, I don't think I know any Montrose. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I'm sure there's something. Sounds like something to do. <laughs> How would you compare the Ibanez Wizard neck to a Charvel Pro Mod? Oh, the Charvel's much thicker. It's not even close. Yeah. It's a rounder, too. Yeah. It's like it's not even a contest. You know, it's like I can wrap my finger on my thigh. I could never do that on the on the Charvel. Not gonna happen. A much, much smaller neck. <laughs> Guys, would you get a Fender, Strat, Custom Shop, or a Sir? Uh, the resale value, value tells me Fender, but Sir is a good name. Sir makes really good guitars, um, without a doubt. Uh, personally, I'd probably go to the Fender Custom Shop. I think just because I like Fender. And, um, and like you say, I think the resale value. Now, I think Sir hold their value. I don't see Sir having dramatic drops in value. They seem to hold on to their their value um so i don't know that you necessarily taking a big hit but between the two i think i'm i think i'm going fender custom shop i think it's just my personal preference Seventy-five and breezy in San Diego. Yeah, but that's your day. That's your day. Three hundred days a year. Steve's still looking at PRS? Yeah, I was looking earlier today. Stock is down, though, right now because uh, a lot of the stores are closed. Got to wait till they all open back up and all the stock becomes available again. And they're going to have some good pricing soon. So, something will... I have a feeling this year... I have a feeling... I got a good feeling about this one. think about Ingvi Malmsteen Stratocaster. I'm willing to buy one, but I'm scared because of scallop neck. That will go out of tune if I play some funk or something like that. Well, to get around that, you'd put very heavy strings on it. Right? Because then you can't push it out of tune because the strings are friggin' tight. they tight. Tight like a tiger. So that's, that's one way around it. A lot of people who get scallop guitars will put, like, 11s on it. You know, if they normally play 10s, they'll put an 11 on it. If they normally play 9s, they'll put 10s on it. And that seems to help with the kung fu grip. And that is an issue. It's it, it, that's an issue, though, with jumbo frets, too. You know, it's very easy. To... That's just pushing down on a fret. Uh, did you see TKK's new PRS cool top? Yeah, I saw that. The McCarty S2. I thought it looked nice. Yeah, I tell you, I like the new Silver Skies with the... Um, I like the Silver Sky with the uh, Maple fretboard. I think those look real cool. You know? Those are nice. I could do that.
I bet it sounds great. Where is that one made? This is probably made in the Fuji Gen factory in Japan. <laughs> Silver Sky Nebula, yeah, but good luck getting one. The Nebula finish seems to be pretty much gone. I'm not music is when. This guitar plays so nice. I'm so glad I grabbed, you know, it was just whim, right? It was like, what am I going to grab? What am I going to grab? And I swear, I almost went for the EVH, and I was like, you know what? I'm going yellow Ibby. Haven't played it in a while. Does it have all six strings? It does. All right, I'm going Ibby. <laughs> Scaver is using Ted McKnight's picture. No, who's that? You mean Phil McKnight? <laughs> Did Red Beach play a 550? Red Beach had, he might have for a little while, but eventually he had his own model, right? With that cutout in the bottom, the Red Beach. Remember that one? I forget the name of it. Was it like a Viper or something? The Reb. The Reb. Um, it was a cool guitar. Those are kind of rare. Have you tried the Charvel SC1 Relic? I have not. I didn't get a ton of time in, uh, at NAM last year, and I am almost certainly going to skip NAM 2021. See you in 2022. Maybe 2023 if I, they still don't have a vaccine. Steve, do you still have the red strat with the all rosewood deck? I do. I think this Ibanez is a 90. It's either 90 or 91. Oh, today, right, would have been, would have been uh, called to, really, today would have been Kentucky Derby, right? <laughs> Yeah, the Voyager, the Voyager. Yeah, we have an S Voyager. Hello, Chris. Red Beach's nephew. He played Red Beach's signature guitar. Cool. Well, I would hope so. Got to, got to hook a nephew up. Red Beach went to a Sir a long time. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, was the Ultra Fender Strat more expensive than the Strat? Well, they were about ten years apart. But yes, it was. Um, I want to say the Ultra was over a grand. You know, which in 1990, 1992. Um, so the Strat was 80, 81, 82. The Strat Ultra was, I want to say, could have been 89, definitely 90, 91, 92. And then um, I forget, you know, it, where it goes from there. But the, the Ultra had uh, uh, ebony fingerboard, which is pretty rare. I don't know Chop Suey. Um.
Obviously, it's going to end on the one, but how does he get there? You know, how does he get there? Uh. There it is. Damn. <laughs> yeah, chicken on the straw. before. Yeah. Well, like most classic songs like that, it I'm sure it had horrific racist start. <laughs> I, I'm sure it, it had a it had a set of lyrics to it that would make your eyes curl. But uh you know it got it got cleaned up. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I see Ben Tom. Yeah, yeah, I know. See Ben Tom. Ben Tom's got it, yeah. Yeah, I think the I think well, I think they changed the lyrics, right? I think the lyrics were, it was a simpler time, <laughs> and uh, they're like, huh? Well, let's let's change it to a, let me get about a turkey. <laughs> Thanks, John Banks. Much appreciated, man. Is THU full as good as Kemper? Well, Kemper's very different. Kemper's a portable unit, you know? That's, uh, you know, it's a lot cheaper, you know? I mean, the full-blown with no discount THU was like 300 bucks. Um, and on sale, you can get it for like 169 179 can THU do a good brown sound? I don't know. That's, that's this is kind of close. <laughs> Pretty good sound for Van Halen. Yeah, the lyrics went through several revisions. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sure. We just legalized recreational marijuana in the most beautiful Bangor, Maine. Nice. Yeah. You want to head out to Green Truck Farms. Let me recommend Green Truck Farms. Uh, behave league. <laughs> that could be the knife edge. 
Johnny Bean. Seen the positive grid spark? Yeah, I saw it. It's right there. <laughs> yeah, I saw it. It's right there. I did. I damn it! I did a video on it. It's got like a hundred thousand views. <laughs> Maybe not that many, but it's up there. <laughs> Integrity Farms. What do we got up here? They call that modern, modern, modern Eddie. It's wet. It's pretty wet. There you go. John Banks bought a spark. Can't wait to get it. It's a fun amp. It's really fun. It's like wicked, wicked fun. Uh, yeah, Rick. Yeah, no, they're way. Yeah, if you ordered yours in um, February, that was pretty late. They were taking orders back in like October. <laughs> Um, yeah, they, they, they probably underpriced it by about a hundred bucks and, uh, demand really exceeded supply, but, uh, they're killer amps and they just came out with a couple of updates that supposedly added more functionality. I haven't even, I've been so busy this week trying to get a bunch of crap done that I haven't even had a chance to, to fire it up and, and check it out. But, you know, eventually... Steve, are you still using that old guitar interface? Well, I use this over an SPDIF, but I, I my main interface is a brand new Focusrite Scarlet 20i 18 or 18920. What is it? 18920. Gen 3. <laughs> Fifty spots left when you ordered yours. Yeah, they um, they they sold quite well. Mike, much appreciated, man. 
Super appreciated. <laughs> Worries, Joe. Understood. Lots of fun. I need a cook. Ah! Arr, she be empty. Yeah, see, that's why, that's why I like these things. Because you can, you know, you can just find a sound like that and you can get... You find yourself a bit, a bit lost. And there's another one in here that has a huge... This one's called Weed. I really... And I think it's for Tweed. Because it uses a Tweed M. Clean. That's 
get another nice Yeah, weed. No, seriously. The, the, this one's called Modern Clean. This one's called Weed. I'll be have to bring that master up a bit. It's got a wicked giant reverb. Um, it's got a flanger. Well, here's a, here's a wake up call for you. Jesus. I have a door open. That's not right. That's that's the American version of this. That's so much more mid-range pushed versus this. So much more scooped. There's an obnoxious sound. Are you get is it from my mic? Hold on. Is it Is it from my mic? Hold on. Did that get rid of it? I don't think I know any white lion. There's a reason I use that one all the time. It really is one of the best sound impacts. <laughs> And it cleans up. You know, when you... Yeah, it really does. Sailor Mike, we were talking about that earlier. The guy tried to refinish it, and he screwed up. He couldn't. He didn't match the color. This is the original color. It was uh, yellow. He wanted to make it black, but when the decal showed up, it was black decal, so it wouldn't have came through, so he wound up trying to paint it yellow, but then he couldn't find the right yellow to match. You know, the moral of the story is, you know, just leave it alone. <laughs> Who are your favorite rock metal vocalists? Well, Ronnie James Dio comes right to mind. 
you know, um, as does Ozzy Osbourne. I think he's one of the, I love his vocals. Um, you know, and then, uh, you know, uh, of course, you know, all your, your classic, you know, your Zepps, <laughs> your Beatles, your Stones, those, those, all those guys are great singers. Um, you know, the metal stuff, you know, I always liked Kevin Dubrow. I thought the guy could sing. Um, he was a bit of a screamer, but, you know, that that's not easy. And I've heard him live a few times sound really good. Um, and then, uh, I'm trying to think of who else. Who else out there I saw? I saw Bon Jovi a few times, and he sounded fantastic live. Who else did I see that I was like, wow, he sounded really, really good. You know, for a metal singer. I, I tell you, I've seen Kiss a few times, and... Paul's a, a, you know, hit or miss, but Gene always sounds good. Gene can still sing. Jason Wade, the new Chop Tones Orange Pack for THU. Yeah, I'll check that out. Chuck Berry time, yeah. Yeah, Glenn Hughes is a great singer. You know, without a doubt. Glenn Hughes is a really good singer. Really amazing. Yeah, Jeff Tate. I've seen Jeff Tate recently. He's a great singer. Sounds amazing. You know who's a really good singer and whose vocals I really like? Um, is Joey Landreth. Holy gee, man, that guy could sing. With really good vocals. An amazing singer. Um, does sort of like the, um, you know, sort of like a like a R and B rock style with slide. It's really good. Not R and B, but more like um, what I want to call it, like Americana rock. Yeah, Freddie Mercury. Of course, Freddie Mercury, amazing singer. Really, really amazing singer. You know who's a really amazing singer? is Michael Anthony. I've seen him sing by himself a few times. Oh, my God, that guy can sing. And I've seen him harmonize with Sammy. And Sammy Hagar is another amazing singer. I saw him sing recently, and I was like, God damn, he sounds good. Is this guy like 71? I mean, Jesus. <laughs> guy sounds amazing. You know, he's just plugging along. Yeah, Graham Bonnet. I think Graham Bonnet, I, you know, he, he might have blown his voice out. You know, his style of singing is just so over the top. You know, how long can you keep that up year after year, you know? I'm trying to think of who else I liked in the 80s. Believe it or not, and I hate to admit it, you know, Dee Snyder actually isn't that half bad a singer. He really isn't. You know, the guy could sing. And I've seen um, Motley Crue a few times live in the early years when they actually sounded really good. I think they got in more trouble later on as, as Vince slipped into more and more drinking. Speaking of that, what am I thinking of? Bruce Dickinson. I mean, Jesus. I mean, you want to talk about a guy who can sing. I was just listening to um, Number of the Beast. I had that on, uh, I had that on Rolling... Uh, repeat the other day. God, you know. Yeah, Robin Zander. Robin Zander still sounds good. Saw him recently. He sounded amazing. Yeah, Richie Cotson, too. Richie Cotson's a really amazing singer. Um, just forget, just don't even listen to um, uh, Billy Sheehan's bass tone, but check out his uh, version of, um, you know, I must have been through, uh, fooled around and fell in love. It's, he sounds amazing. Um, I think Billy's tone is a, a little too distorted for my liking. He's got all these harmonics going. It felt a bit over the top for that particular song, but and they kill him in the comments. But goddamn, Richie Godson sounds amazing. 
Joe Walsh, another one. He really good singer. I had a whole new respect for him when he showed up on the Stern Show, drunk. I mean, clearly drunk. And they were like, "Hey, you know, um, isn't it true that, uh, that um, you know, Don Henley doesn't want you to play Desperado?" He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Would you play it for us?" He goes, "Sure." <laughs> He got in big trouble. He got in big trouble with Don Henley over there. Don Henley was pissed. He called up a f like a few days later and said, "Guys, guys, don't ever, don't ever call me again." Joe Walsh called up rip shit to Stern, leaving a message saying, "Don't ever call me again." He was so mad because he, he went on there drunk and did Desperado. Oh my God, he sounded so good. He nailed. He sat at the keyboard and played it. I was like, "Oh my God, this guy is a musician." Listen to this dude. You know, nailing all those look, crazy chords, all those changes while singing at the same time. He sounded so good. And of course, you know, of course, Stern played it for freaking 10 years. You know, pretty much pissing off Joe Walsh every time he played it. <laughs> What's up, Dwight? Yeah, Bon Scott. I think Bon Scott's a great singer. I saw Rat, Twisted Sister, Lita Ford, Cheap Trick, and Kingston. I saw um, Bon Jovi open for Rat. And on another ticket, I saw Dawkin open for YNT, who opened for, I think, no. Dawkin opened for Twisted Sister, and YNT was the top of the bill. They came back again. It was just Dawkin and Twisted Sister. Twisted Sister was at the top of the bill. And then when they came back again... It was Twisted Sister, and they were playing, like, Worcester. I was like, oh, my God, because before I, I saw him at, like, uh, i say it was the Paradise, or maybe the Channel. It was the Paradise. Oh, you know where it was? It was the Orpheum. It was the Orpheum. I saw him in the Orpheum. <laughs> I saw Bon Jovi open for the Scorpions in 1984. You know, did I see the Scorpions in 84? I don't think so. I think I saw the Scorpions in 86. I got thrown out. Last song. Second to last song. Because, uh, you know, everyone was standing up on their chair and so was I. And this guy kept pushing us down and I was like in the last row. And the dude kept pushing me down. And at one point, I was like, you know, dude, seriously? It's like everybody's standing up. He's like, you know, enough out of you. You'd be out of here. And he, he caught me up there again. He goes, that's it. You're out. And he, like, threw me out. I was like, oh, please. Uh, I was supposed to see Quiet Riot, Quiet Riot open for Black Sabbath. But with the I, really Purple Sabbath, right? Ian Gillen was singing. Um, that actual show that I was at is the live Purple Sabbath that's out on the market. That's the show I was at. Um, and uh, we arrived late and uh, for Quiet Riot. And we were trying to get to our seats going, you can hear him in there. And we walked in and they went, good night. <laughs> we were like, what? Gone. Didn't even see them. Saw like the back of their heads as they walked off the stage. And the, all the lights came up. I was like, I turned to them. I was like, I'm going to kill you guys because they were so late. They were running so freaking late. I was like, I don't want to miss the opening act. I'm only going for quiet, quiet. I don't even want to see Sabbath. <laughs> Which I did, but not really, because it was Ian Gillen. Besides, they they literally made an album from that night. It's like I I can listen to that I can listen to that show anytime I want. I don't think I know "Sad But True." People always ask for songs I don't know. 
You know, I was never, I don't own a single Metallica album. Not one. Never bought one. Never liked Metallica. I uh, never really thought the dude could sing. Was never, thought he was a shouter, like a lot of those bands. To me, there were the bands that, like, could sing and play and the bands that could only play. I right? never, never made it up. But in the late 80s, they were so desperate for anybody that, you know, Metallica finally got a, a ton of airplay. But they were dead between 82 and 87. For their first five years, they were, right? It was only when one got big, that's when it, that's when they really took off. I don't think I know Firehouse. Something like that. never crazy about firehouse i always felt that that was just a that was a paul song to play every night to make sure he had one of his songs in every set right <laughs> that was paul's song that he made sure was being sung every night also it was a setup for a gene blowing the friggin flame so Yeah, I was never a fan of Metallica. In fact, I remember a guy coming in the music store and being really upset with me that I didn't like Metallica. And and uh, and I had just seen Anthrax, and he was like, well, why could you go see Anthrax and not see Metallica? I said, because Anthrax were kind of goofy. And they, they thought they weren't taking themselves so seriously. It's like Metallica takes themselves so seriously. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not seeing, I'm not really seeing a drummer who can play all that great. I'm not seeing a guitar player who can solo all that great. And I'm not seeing a singer who can sing all that great. The best part about Metallica is that the rhythm guitar player is the best guitar player in the band who can actually write some pretty sick riffs. His riffs are friggin' amazing. You know, James Hetfield is the best guitar player in that band. But I just never really dug the singing. I always felt it was sort of like groaning, shouting, you know. And, and unfortunately, that set the stage for the 90s where everybody sounded like James Hetfield. <laughs> But yeah, no, I was never a Metallica fan. You know, by the time Metallica made it big, I was 29. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, well, <laughs> or maybe 26. You know, pretty, pretty far away from your most formidable years. I would say most people who like Metallica, who are big fans of Metallica, were born in 1976. Between 74 and 78, with 76 being the sweet spot. Because in 1990, they would have been 14. Yeah, I was never a Pearl Jam fan, never any of that. And so, like, in in 90, like, 91, I was way into, like, Mike Stern and John Schofield, Hiram Bullock. Like, um, I really wasn't into the, the, you know, it's still Van Halen. I still thought Van Halen was really good, you know, but, yeah, not really. <laughs> More of an Aussie guy. Right, because when did um, when uh, Crazy Train came out when I was fourteen? Right, it really does kind of tie into you know who was around when you were fourteen. Metallica got big when I was like twenty four. You, you missed you missed the boat with me. <laughs> uh. Vito Brada, what about him? He's a good guitar player. I don't know a single one of his riffs, but he's good. Kind of a two-handed thing with the headless guitar. Vito! Vito Brada! Where was he from? I gotta think New York or New Jersey, right? Vito! <laughs> 
20 minutes, man, this night's going by. Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, yeah. They got a few good, like, again, Metallica's got some great riffs. I just wish they were almost like, wish they were instrumentals and someone else was playing lead guitar and they had a better drummer. Other than that, I love them. <laughs> Yeah, I was way into more. I was way more into like scorpions, you know. It's, it's so funny. <laughs> I went to go see Monsters of Rock. Metallica was the opening act, right? Because they, they wanted someone to get asses in seats. I showed up after their set. I remember a friend of mine walking out. He goes, dude, you miss Metallica. I said, I don't give a shit about Metallica. He goes, dude, it's the only band I'm here to see. I'm leaving now. I was like, see ya. <laughs> yeah, he was much younger. He was like 10 years younger, about 10 years younger than me. You know, I said, I'm here to see Van Halen. I'm here to see Dokken, Scorpions, and Van Halen. And they were all pretty damn good. And then I think Kingdom Come was on the list, too. <laughs> Saw Randy when I was 13. I was 13 years old. Really? That's awesome. That's awesome. I don't know how to play Sad But True. I don't think I do. Is that it? Here you go. That's the saddest but true. <laughs> so, Green Meaning, you, you, you're talking like uh, you're uh, Mike Varney, you're uh, Shrapnel Records. That's where most people came up through. That's where most, like, if you wanted to get Chris and Pelletta, and Tony McAlpine and Racer X. And I think early Ingve, I think they all came through Mike Varney, right? <laughs> Foxborough Stadium, yeah. Yeah, Foxborough, Foxborough Stadium. At some point during the day, you may have heard an M80 go off. Those were friends of mine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, they they're they dicks. <laughs> they whipped it way up in the front. You could see the state police were I I knew they had them. I was separated from them. I saw them. I was with another group, saw them, they got separated. Then all of a sudden, maybe an hour later, I heard the big kaboom. Saw them maybe an hour after that. I was like, Was that you? He goes, Oh yeah, the state police were they're pretty pissed. <laughs> they they didn't catch him though. They you know. Just the normal, just the normal noises in here. Yeah, cacophony. He produced Wasp. Yeah, there's another one. I saw them open for Kiss. Um, was Stanley Jordan on Shrapnel too? Was he? Was he a, a Shrapnel guy? Yeah, Greg Howe, Sean Lane. There you go. <laughs> I'm, as you know, I shred a little war pigs. I'm worried about them taking my money. Last time I've been playing like you know copyrighted songs. Uh, they've been they've been dipping. They've been doing a little bit of the dippy do, and uh, you know I I it's only a it's only twenty five cents. I can't give fifteen of it away. <laughs> yeah, that's what landed in your beer and pull your hand off exactly. <laughs> Vince Gill, great singer, great guitarist. I agree. He's both. He's a really good guitar player. He's a really amazing singer. Guy's been around a long time, but man, he's got the... He is. He's an extremely talented guy, Vince Gill. It looks like he'd be an accountant if he wasn't. <laughs> if he wasn't out there, but man, dude, he's got some talent. Yeah, Metallica's like Russia Sabbath. You either like him or you don't. I know so many people that hate Rush. I love Rush. 
A lot of people really hate them. I don't know why. I don't know why. All right, hold on. I'm gonna get rid of my my beep. It's beeping. My beep. There we go. Ooh. Let me check this real quick. Check the radar range. <laughs> oh, people seem to like that one. Oh yeah. Sweet. Scooby Doo. Skill was originally in Pure, Pure Prairie League. Oh, I remember them. I remember them. They had a few tunes out there. Pure Prairie League. Yeah. You like PVMs? I do. I got one. I got two. I got three. How many PVMs do I have? Wait. One, two, three. I got three. All right. 6505 Plus. Uh, the Viper 100 and the Viper 100 Pro. Yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah, there you go. Harley Benton overrated. No, if anything, they're underrated. God, the Harley Bentons are really nice guitars. I mean, for the money you're paying. How, how could something that's $150 be overrated? <laughs> Ever, right? Their most expensive electric is like 450 And it comes with, like, you know, the appointments of guitars that cost, you know, 1500 Roasted maple necks and flame maple and all this stuff, you know, a real Floyd Rose, you know, um, uh, the only, the weakest part of the Harley Benton lineup is of course the pickups, All right? They're probably, you know, saving some money by getting some big giant bulk pickups, but you know, throw some Duncans, throw your favorite, you know, DiMarzio's, EMG's, Duncans in there. You're all set. <laughs> Uh, why not a 5150? Well, you know, I, I think I wanted a combo amp. I went with a 65. The 6505 plus combo. And, um, you know, when it came with a swamp thing, an eminent swamp thing, and which made it sound a little different, too. And then, you know, the, 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 the friggin' Vipers had a bunch of 5150s in it. I'm not a big, I'm not a big, uh, you know, giant tube head guy. Never really have been. More combo amp. They do make a 5150 combo, but, you know, it's a, it's a lot of schlepping. I, you know, I, I get, it's, it's, I get good tones. It's like, what am I chasing? Tone chasing, right? It's like... What's wrong with that? It's like I have that 6505. I should just get rid of it. I never friggin' play it. You know, I, I really play, quite frankly, the um, most of the time, either the, the Katana in the attic, the, the Katana mini over on my desk, or the two um, uh, Hughes and Kentners. You know, one of the two, he's in Katniss. That's what I'm playing like 99% of the time is down to those choices, so. They just sold, they just stole Soldano's sound. Yeah, could be, yeah. Yeah, Agufish has a, uh, he's with the Harley Benton. They did a SIG. They did a single cut SIG. The Agu SIG. Uh, 
surprised the head Stark darker because uh, someone thought that they could do a paint job on it and they screwed it up. And they're idiots. Uh, the guy wanted to paint it black, but the decal showed up black. And so he had to paint it back yellow <laughs> so that the logo would show up. And, of course, he couldn't find the right matching yellow. He went down to Home Depot and bought yellow. He needed to buy Dayglow yellow. But anyway, anyway, the rest is history. <laughs> For short money, yeah, this was I traded a Squire uh, for it. Uh, Squire Classic Vibe that I bought for short money. Hello, Steve. Sorry for late all the time. But very loyal. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. School bus yellow. Yeah, kind of is, isn't it? Kind of is like a school bus yellow. A little something to help with your copyright problems. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking your way, Rick Nielsen. <laughs> and the other, the, the the some Italian company came in for Ride On a couple of weeks ago. I played a few few riffs of Ride On, and they were like, "Thank you." You only, oh, you got to be quicker than that. Tony says I have bad tooth pain. Oh, that sucks. I hate that. <laughs> Yeah, you might have to uh you might have to get a root canal or something, deaden that up. It's uh yeah, no tooth pain's the worst. I've had it. Still THU, still THU. Yeah, Ooh, it was a classic vibe though, it was a good squire. You know, he's like he's like a jaw drops to the floor, Squire for an RG. Yeah, but this RG had problems when I got it. I remember, it had a little bit of electrical problems. I had to f figure out there was something went wrong with this switch here, and then the output jack. There was something I changed on it. I remember, and oh, there was something screwed up. I forget what it was. I think it was electronics. I don't know. Then it just took me a little bit. I had to open it up and figure out what was going on. Um, and then there was a. It had a lot of. I don't know if you can. I have the back off on this. Um, uh, oh, no, I guess it would go that way. You can see that there's, like, some some crap going on up here. I think he had, um, like, one of those trim setters in here. So there's a big hole, like, dr you know, uh, drilled up into the body. And so, you know, it's not... It definitely needed a little bit of work. Um, it has a little bit of fret buzz when I got it, but, you know, I've been working on Ibanez guitars for a long time, and it, it just took, a, you know, a few adjustments and fixing the electronics, and I probably need to oil this bridge. I think Green Meanie's right. I think my knife edges might be, you know, might need a little bit of uh, lube to help out. <laughs> the show tonight we'll need to catch tomorrow almost 2 a.m here yeah i know it's late it's late for my european friends i i know i appreciate it i appreciate it it's, it's definitely 
favorite locri at all. That's the one mode we never speak of. Almost 3 a.m. Damn, Strat, Tom, that's late. <laughs> Yeah, you must be in Central European. Uh, do you still use a DI with the focus right? Uh, which one? I don't. I never did. I only used it in that one video about that because it was a common problem with those entry level ones. I just wanted to use it as an example. So, no, I used to, at the time I made that video, I was probably going through this directly. And then later I was going through, I think, an 18i20 Gen 1. I was going through the 18i 20 Gen 1 for years. I want to say I changed that in 20... Oh, yeah, I probably already had it by then. I want to say it was 2014. Oh, man, maybe it was 2016 I got that. And then... Um, and now I just got the Gen 3, which is awesome. I really like the Gen 3. Uh, the preamps are even nicer, and they have the, the air um, feature to, to every one. Uh, so no eight Scarlet eighteen I twenty about five hundred. You're looking at about five hundred. Oh, thanks, Alaska, uh, Alexa. Yeah, that that set off that set off my unit across the room. Here. See you, Susie. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, if you had to pick decent guitar or cheap amp or cheap guitar, I think you mean uh, cheap guitar and decent amp. I think you mean to switch those. Um, if you want the best sound, you, you go with the second one, right? If you want the best playability, by far, you go with the first. I can tell you, for me, I'm having no problem with that Katana, which is a $100 amp, that Katana Mini. I could live with that sound. It's not very loud, but I could live with that, that $99 amp, um, if I had to. Uh, and I'd be much happier playing a much nicer guitar. Versus, I think, playing a, a really crappy guitar... And going through a really nice amp, I would just feel like, I think that would be, I would probably get a better sound, right? Without a doubt. But I wouldn't like it as much. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be as enjoyable. So I think for me personally, I'm going with decent guitar and, and crappy amp. Because I could, I could probably live with a crappy amp. I don't know if I could live with a crappy guitar. Uh, Steve, have you played the new Pia guitar? I did pull one off the wall at NAMM very briefly um, and just felt it. But, you know, this, it's the worst place to check out a guitar because there's 10 people behind you going, you know, how long are you going to stand there and after you've been there for 10 seconds? <laughs> so it can be a bit crowded. But, um, yeah, no, they're nice, man. They're real nice. Those Pias are friggin' they're beautiful. Nice looking guitar. Uh, what do you think about Malmsteen and Mark Knopfler? Do you ever listen to them or something like that? I like them both. Um, certainly, Sultans of Swing was huge when I was a kid. Right. That was all over the radio in the late 70s. I remember that in like 77, just like non-freaking stop on the radio. And that was a huge influence listening to that song all the time. Um, and Ingve, God, I, I bought into Ingve when he was with Alcatraz, you know. Um, I, I always thought Ingve was good. But, you know, like anything, Ingve, I was sort of over Ingve by 87 or 88. You know, I mean, I remember Ingve in 83. So five years later, I was like, okay. But, uh, no, Ingve is an amazing player. He really, really is. Um, just ask him. <laughs> All right, dudes. Well, it is nine o'clock. I think we're going to wrap it up. Would I buy a Kemper? No, but they could send me one. 
Send, send me one, Kemper. <laughs> I, I don't think I'll be dropping. I don't think I'll be dropping two grand on a on a you know a Kemper anytime soon. But uh, they are nice. I've had people over here with them, and they they do seem real nice. No, you rocked on Donkey Don K Kong. <laughs> it's a great green name. All right, dudes, everybody, thanks so much for hanging out. Super extra mega thanks to, to anyone who contributed. Super extra mega thanks to all the mods. I really appreciate you modding the moderates and being moderators. Uh, much appreciated. And, uh, you know, we'll be back in another week. Maybe I'll have the, maybe we'll break the EVH out next week. I don't know. We'll do something. I felt like playing this one this week. I was glad I, I was glad I did. Glad I did. I like, you know, you, you got you to gotta shuffle it up once in a while. All right, dudes. Thanks uh, for hanging out. And uh, stay safe. And, uh, you know, we'll do it all again in a week. There you have it. No. No, you rock. <laughs> all right, dudes. I'm hitting the end stream button. Here we go. I'll see you in a week. Until then, rock on.